All right, how exactly does L3 cache cause such a big difference in gaming performance? I understand that it has much higher bandwidth than system memory, yep. And I understand it being physically right next to the cores uh, means data has to travel uh, a much shorter distance, so better latency, which is all true. But we're talking about 96 megabytes versus 32 megabytes on a 5800X 3D versus a 5800X. And when games use in uh, when games use in the gigabytes of data, okay, um, how can such a comparably much lower amount have such an impact? Hmm. There's probably a few things to talk about here. I think, yes, games obviously use gigabytes of, of data or data, but um, the majority of that are things like game assets. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about textures and mm -hmm. audio which use a significant amount of space in terms of like total game size, which really that stuff, you know, doesn't need to be put into CPU cache. Mm -hmm. Textures, basically, they're just feeding that straight to the GPU. Audio, I mean, that can be processed directly off like a hard drive. Mm -hmm. It's so irrelevant to, to that sort of thing. It's, we're really talking about like game logic, which is, you know, the, instruct, the main instructions and the main code path for the game, mm -hmm. which tends to limit things um, and it needs like really quick access to memory. It needs to not just have high bandwidth, but low latency as well for accessing those things so that the just the general engine of the game can be run quickly. And you're only loading so much of that as well. Yeah, that's right. Like, it, yes, the game executable may be quite large and it may have lots of dependent libraries and those sorts of things. But, you know, there are still, it's clearly larger than the size of the cache, mm -hmm. that the total sort of thing that needs to be put in there. So... When we're talking about 32 versus 96, much more of that stuff can be put in. It requires less swapping in and out of cache. So obviously that is going to cause performance issues. And yeah, it just has more access to things that need to be accessed with very low latency. So if you had like a game that let's say required, let's say it had like 300 megabytes of, of data that needs really low latency access and is very sensitive to those sorts of things, then yeah, going from 32 to 96 huge performance benefits there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, of course, some parts that's still spilling over to system memory, but that's all down to like how the CPU optimizes and chooses what to put in the cache versus what not to put in the cache. You know, the CPUs are quite intelligent about those sorts of things these days. Yeah, that's right. So it's yeah, we see with, with the Zen architecture, if you have a Zen processor, a monolithic die processor that has an 8 megabyte L3 cache, then going from 8 to 16 is quite a substantial uplift. Then from the 16 to the 32 gigabyte, another substantial uplift. So I guess it's more like where's the point of diminishing returns on that? And so far we've yeah. seen that it's not at 96 megabytes. But we are in the diminishing returns from the perspective that the cache is tripled, but the game performance hasn't tripled. Well, so, it doesn't double either yeah. when you're going from 8 to 16. But yeah. having said that, um, that what I said is not entirely true because there are some games where you do find the diminishing returns where there's not a big yes. performance difference yeah. between the 5800X and 5800X 3D. It's generally not newer, more demanding games, um, but it, it can vary. I mean, one way to sort of look at it is it's it's kind of like, I don't know if this is a good example, but like almost like VRAM, when you have a certain amount of VRAM and you run out of it and you overflow, which has to go to local storage, um, or sorry, system memory rather, um, you, you filter down the various storage levels. Once you fill your, your RAM, you then go to local storage and you're going through increasingly uh, smaller, well, larger buffers that have less bandwidth to access. And so in the yeah. case of a game, that will introduce stuttering, but you don't see that with L3 cache because it's still going to a relatively high next tier of, of memory buffer, but it's only until you filter down to something that's very slow that then it halts yeah. everything and you get mad stuttering. Uh, but in the same, the, the more L3 cache you have, the more, the more localized memory you have, the smoother the outcome should be. Yeah, so, that's right. Which is why we often see really good frame time performance on the 5800X 3D. Yeah, and that, that's why. Um, but yeah, it's 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 similar to sort of anything else we see in the CPU, whether it be VRAM or, or RAM or whatever. When it's got to go to that next tier, it slows down performance. It's just that it's much more shocking the difference you see when you're going from like you know DRAM to an SSD, for example. Yeah, of course. It's just it has to do with you know the different. I guess it's almost like you could if you lined up all the game data in a in a big row mm -hmm. and you sort of sorted it by what's the stuff that's accessed the most frequently and is the most latency sensitive, mm -hmm. then that's how you try and order it into the resources that you have. So the stuff that's really not 
used frequently and is not sensitive, you try and keep that on your storage drive. Mm -hmm. Then the middle stuff would tend to go into like your VRAM or system memory. And then the things that are used really, really frequently, you would want to chuck that as much of that into the cache as possible. And it just depends on the game engine and those sorts of things as to how what that profile looks like over all of the storage requirements. Like some games have a, a tiny sliver of, you know, that amount of data that needs low latency access. Other games have much larger sections of that that need the low latency access. And that's where you see the game game performance. You know, there's some games that are super sensitive, some games that have no sensitivity. But I guess the, the yeah, I guess the question is, it's kind of thing, if there was like a gigabyte or two gigabytes of sensitive data that needed to be used. Yeah, it's always beneficial to have more. Then, well, but even then like that, going from 32 megabytes to 96 megabytes would make an insignificant difference because there's just such an overwhelming amount of important data. And that, yeah. I guess the point is that's not the case. Yes, so. yeah, 100%. Because otherwise you'd see a lot of swapping and stuff. Mm -hmm. You still see some benefit, but it would be not as much as potentially yeah, other situations. it would be, be minuscule. But I, I guess it's one of those situations where more is generally better. I mean, I guess with cash, there's things like cash hits to be concerned about. The larger you make a, a pool, it can be harder to find the data within mm -hmm. the cache. Mm -hmm. So you have to have very intelligent systems there to, to deal with that. But obviously for gaming, we've seen, generally speaking, it is a very important part of CPU uh, architectures in terms of performance. Mm -hmm.